practice. Nice to see all of you. I am excited to be here and we have a new focus this month. Let's get started with Om and Shanti. And then I'll find my chant once we get going here. Come to a comfortable seated position. Start with Loka Somasta Sukino Bavantu. It's on page four, it's number four in the Jeev Mukta chant book. May all beings everywhere be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and to that freedom for all. Loka Samasta Sukino Bavantu. Together. Loka Samasta Sukino Bavantu. for a moment. Keep the eyes closed if you'd like. Just breathe normally. Remember that mantra is protection for the mind. Always remembering that when we recite mantra, we're using it as a tool to change the mind. If we repeat something over and over again, we become that which we recite. All right, and an oldie but goodie. It's on page nine of the chant book. If you have it, it's number 20. In Sanskrit, it's Twameva Mata, Chapita Twameva, Twameva Bandus Chasaka Twameva, Twameva Vidya Dravinam Twameva, Twameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva. Very beautiful. O oh God, you are my mother, father, relative, friend, knowledge and wealth. You are my everything. And we'll do um, call and response. We'll do it a cappella today. Twa meva mata chapita twa meva. Together. Twa meva mata chapita twa meva. Twa meva bandus chasaka twa meva. Twa meva bandus chasaka twa meva. Twa meva vidya dravinam twa meva. Twa meva vidyam. 
Dravinam twa meheva. Sorry about that. Twa meva sarva mama deva deva. Twa meva sarva mama deva deva. We're going to sing it one time all together. I'm going to drop an octave so I can actually sing the song. Okay. Twa meva mata chapita twa meva. Twa meva bandus chasaka twa meva. Twa meva vidya dravinam twa meva. Twa meva sarvam mama deva deva. So the mantra is reminding us that we can see ourselves in everybody. We can see that highest self in everyone. This month, Sharon Gannon, we are lucky we get another Focus of the Month written by her. And it's titled Spiritual Activism. She starts with a um, verse from the Bhagavad Gita. It's the sixth chapter. It's the 29th verse. It says, Sarva Bantushtam Atman Nam Sarva Bhutana Katam Mani. Ikshate yoga yukta atma sarva tra samya darshana. Through the practice of yoga, the yogi sees the divine self in all beings at all times. So whenever there's a verse given, I like to get a couple of references. So first I turn to my favorite, which is the Stephen Mitchell Bhagavad Gita. It's a really amazing um, reading of this book. There's no commentary, it's just translation. And uh, he even has an audio book that you can listen to. He has a very soothing voice. He translates it here. He says, He, when he sees all beings as equal in suffering or in joy, because they are like himself, that man has grown perfect in yoga. So it's this mention again of equanimity of mind, right? And this is in the chapter on yoga of meditation. Then I usually turn to Swami Satchidananda's verse because he gives commentary after. And it's nice to hear some words about this, uh, this wisdom. So here, sixth uh, chapter, 29th verse, he translates as, Your mind becomes harmonized through yoga practices. You begin to see the Atman in all beings and all beings in yourself. You see the same self everywhere and in everything. Lord Krishna speaks of the mind harmonized through yoga. Without equanimity of mind, one can never see oneself in all beings and all beings in oneself. That means you rise above superficial indifferences to see the very essence of which everything is made. You rise above the changes of name and form. Nature is filled with name and form, but behind this, these is one essence. There are two realities in life. Always remember both. Forgetting either one brings problems. If you only think, yes, we're all spirit, then you cease to function in a normal way and aren't fit for worldly life. At the same time, if you only live on the superficial level, then you constantly see the differences and that creates many problems. Who is she? Who is he? I am different. You are different. Tension comes, then rivalry and hatred. Likes and dislikes arise, but the real yogi a real yogic way of life is to keep both these realities in mind, the absolute reality and the superficial or manifested reality. You know, they're powerful verses and sometimes you have to sit and contemplate them for a while to really get the true meaning behind it. But I think equanimity of mind is a good place to begin with our spiritual activism. It's a great uh, writing this month by Sharon. And I'm going to ask you to read that yourself. I'm just going to skip down to the last paragraph for this first class this month. Sharon writes, To think well of another and to want that person's happiness, even though you do not agree with that person's current thoughts and actions, is the key to spiritual activism. When you engage in conversation with others who may not agree with your point of view, be sure that you are coming from a place of tolerance yourself. I try to treat whomever I meet as an old friend, says Dalai Lama. 
This gives me a genuine feeling of happiness. This is the practice of compassion. A tr truly compassionate attitude towards others does not change even if they are behaving negatively. And from a Harvard professor, Arthur C. Brooks, when you feel content for another person, practice warm heartedness towards them. Dr. Martin Luther King put it another way. You have no moral grounding with someone who can feel your underlying contempt for them. So when I started Jivamukhi Yoga in 1999, um, I had no idea I was looking for it. Uh, my wife was my girlfriend then and she took me to the classes and uh, I was blown away by Sharon again Sharon Gannon and David Life's teachings. And um, one of the things that they suggest is that you practice ahimsa nonviolence, which is the first of the first limbs of yoga, Ashtanga yoga. It's the first limb, yama, and it's the very first yama of the five, nonviolence. They said the easiest way to practice nonviolence is through our diet, which I was like, whoa, this is really intense. And so I started reading some books. They suggested Diet for a New America, John Robbins. I read a couple other books about the current situation going on in our country and the world with factory farms. And I started to develop some compassion for um, the incredible suffering that's going on with uh, the animals. You can kind of see it right now in a big way, right? Um, really intense. I'm not going to get off on that right now, but um, so when I was kind of thinking about this, we had a Thanksgiving Day retreat up at Ananda Ashram that year, and uh, it was great. It was about, you know, giving thanks, of course, and it was about ahimsa, nonviolence, and uh, we were able to ask David Life one question. You know, we got scheduled. You can go ask him one question, you know? It's like, only one question, what am I gonna ask? So, you know, I went and I found David, you know, he was in a quiet room in the, I think it was um, in the main house. And um, I sat down in front of him and I said, David, I'm really confused. You know, I'm a, I'm a chef and what I do is I cook for other people and I, you know, I, ha I prepare meat for them and I feel really weird because I'm trying to be this, you know, vegan, not eating meat, but here I am totally engaging in the whole, you know, um, action of feeding people these animals that I'm trying not to eat. And, you know, he said, why, why are you practicing veganism? And I kind of laughed and I joked, I said, it's because you have suggested it. You said this is a way to experience yoga. And he says, all right, so you're saying it's a spiritual practice. And I said, yes, it's a spiritual practice. And he goes, so why do we practice our spiritual practices? And I said, so we can experience yoga. He says, no, so we can experience the sameness in others, so that we can experience ourself and others. You know, we don't practice veganism to put ourselves on a pedestal. It's not a one up, one down type of situation. It's an equaling situation. We're doing something for ourselves personally that makes us feel more comfortable in this body, in this lifetime. And through that, we're able to then be there for other people. We'll be able to see ourselves in other people. He says, you don't want to go and, you know, it's so in point with what Sharon wrote this month, which you'll find out as you read it. But you don't want to come from a place of anger or judgment or finger pointing. And you've seen, I've seen that before with different things in my life, especially with diet. You know, if someone finds out I'm a vegan, it becomes this really interesting dynamic. You know, um, I've never been one to since that day preach it or tell you you should do this. But I just set the example. Um, this is how I live my life and it makes me more comfortable. But I really think the key that what David was saying was, you know, don't do something to make you further apart from people. You're doing something so you can be closer to people. You know, my veganism has nothing to do with trying to convert anyone. You know, it's just, it's a, 
a personal decision I made so that I could be happier and I could be more comfortable and feel like that I was taking some actions that were going to help others. Um, so in 1999, it's 2020 now. That's a lot of years doing this, but you know, it feels good to me. I feel good about that. So spiritual activisions are focused this month. Remember the prayer, Chwameva Mata, that you're my mother, my father, my friend, my everything. And um, we'll unpack this a little bit more. I think it's important right now. Everything we see on the news around the world, we need to see how we can reach each other and not take a position. Okay? At the end of the day, everyone's doing the best they can. And we have to learn to support one another's opinion so that we can reach our equanimity of mind. All right, I think I got some good music today. Bring your hands to prayer in front of your heart. Take a breath here. Close your eyes if you'd like. Make a dedication of your practice. I'm going to offer my practice up to Sharon and David. Begin your ujjayi breathing, audible breath sounds like the ocean in the back of the throat. On your next exhale, release your arms down. We're going to start with sun salutation A. Inhale, lift the prayer of your head. Exhale, folding forward, place your hands flat on the floor. Inhale, come to a flat back, look up. Exhale, step forward, jump back, slowly lower, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, back, downward facing dog. Hold and breathe here. Inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, bend your knees and forward. Step or jump between your hands. Come to a flat back. Look up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come all the way up. Lift the prayer of your head. Bring your hands to prayer in front of your heart. Pause here for a moment. Bring your gaze to your fingertips. Continue with your ujjayi breathing. Audible breath. Find one pointedness. Plugging the boom mic into our practice so it has better sound. On your exhale, release your arms down. Variation of sun salutation. Inhale, hook your thumbs, bring your hands forward and overhead, arch back. Exhale, folding forward with bent knees, interlace your hands behind, draw the arms long. Inhale, hands down, step back with your right foot into lunge, look up. Exhale, your left foot back, downward facing dog. Inhale, slowly roll forward to plank position. Exhale, keep the elbows close to the body. Bend the elbows a little bit or a lot. Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, back downward facing dog. Inhale, roll forward to plank position. Exhale, knees, chest, chin to the floor, seat is high. Inhale, push through to a low cobra. Through bent knees, push your seat to your heels, come back. Downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot steps forward into lunge. Look up. Exhale, left foot meets the right. Fold forward. Inhale, bend your knees slightly with your thumbs. Bring your hands forward and overhead. Arch back. Exhale, folding forward with bent knees. Interlace your hands behind. Draw your arms long. Inhale, hands down. Step your left foot back. Exhale, your right foot back. Downward facing dog. Inhale, roll forward to plank position. Exhale, lower, chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Exhale, back, downward facing dog. Inhale, roll forward, plank position. Exhale, knees, chest, chin to the floor. Inhale, push through to a low cobra. Exhale, back, push your seat to your heels. And back, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward into lunge, for up. Exhale, right foot meets the left, pull forward. Inhale, bend your knees slightly with your thumbs. 
Bring your hands forward and overhead, arch back. Exhale, release your hands to prayer. Gaze at your fingertips or close your eyes. Breathing in and breathing out. On your next exhale, release your arms down. Sun Salutation B. Inhale, bend your knees deeply. Lift the prayer up, Utskatasana. Exhale, diving forward. Place your hands down. Inhale, come to a flat fast look up. Exhale, step or jump back, slowly lower. Upward facing dog. Exhale, back downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot forward, turn the left heel down. Lift the prayer of her head, warrior one. Exhale, place your hands down, step back, slowly lower, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, back downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward, right heel down, lift the prayer of her head, warrior one. Exhale, place your hands down, step back, slowly lower, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Option to stay here. Or again, inhale, step the right foot forward, turn the left heel down. The prayer of her head, warrior one. Exhale, place your hands down, lower, chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Exhale back, inhale, left foot forward. Right heel down, lift the prayer of her head. Exhale, place your hands down, step back, slowly lower. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, back, downward facing dog. Hold and breathe here. Inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale, a breath here. Exhale, bend your knees, look forward. Step or jump between your hands. Come to a flat back, look up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, bend the knees deeply, lift the prayer. Roots can toss in a hold here. Try to bring your gaze to your thumbs. Relax the forehead, relax the shoulders. Get beyond the difficulty. Look for steadiness, equanimity of mind. Inhale, a breath here. Exhale, dive forward, place your hands down. Now come to a flat back, look up. Exhale, step or jump back, lower, chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Exhale, back, downward facing dog. Inhale, step the right foot forward. Bend the front knee, lift the prayer up, warrior one. We're gonna hold here. Today we're going to release the prayer to the front of the room. Press palms together for devotional practice. Bring your gaze to the thumbs. Exhale, exaggerate the hands forward, close off the heart. Inhale, pull the shoulders back together. Lead by the heart, lift the prayer. Be appropriate gaze place. Hold and breathe. Inhale. Inhale a breath here for five. Exhale, open the arms wide, second warrior pose. We're gonna hold here, but first inhale, straighten the right leg. Exhale, re-bend the right knee. See if you can come a little bit deeper into the standing pose of the second warrior. Look to the back arm, see that you are parallel to the wall on either side of you. Keep the shoulders relaxed. Take any other adjustment you'd like to make. Complete the pose with the gaze over the middle finger. Audible breath. Exhale, five. We're going to move into the third warrior pose. You're going to turn the back heel up, square the hips. You're going to bend the front knee and you're going to lift the straight left leg off the floor. You can reach the arms towards the back of the room or swing them forward. As you gain stability, see if you can straighten all limbs, reach in all directions equally. Inhale, and exhale, inhale, and 
Exhale, remember these practices are about liberation, not bondage. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, five. Think of the smooth transition. You're gonna step the back foot to the mat, bend the front knee, hands down. Downward facing dog. Option to stay here or go through the vinyasa. One time on your own. Link breath and movement. Let's try the other side. Right heel turns down, left foot steps forward. Lift the prayer of our head, warrior one. Okay, we're gonna hold here. Let's release the hands to the front of the room. Create Anjali Mudra, the prayer. This is about asking for something. It's coming from the heart, so lifting up, asking something from your heart. Oh, please let me see people as equal to me. Let me see a level field where no one's above or below anyone. Exaggerate the hands forward, and the shoulders back and together. Lead with the heart. Lift the prayer to the appropriate gaze place for you. Breathing here. breath here. Exhale, open the arms wide, second warrior pose. We're going to hold here, but let's first inhale, straighten the left leg. Exhale, re-bend your left knee. Come a little bit deeper into the standing pose of the second warrior. Take a look to the back arm, make sure it's parallel. Make any other adjustments you'd like to make. Hold and breathe here. Inhale, you're gonna get ready for the third warrior pose. You're gonna bring your hips uh, parallel. Swivel the hips forward and inhale, lift the right foot off the floor. Start with a bent knee for balance. As you gain stability, you reach in all directions. Five, think the smooth transition. Bend your front knee, place your hands down, step the right foot back. Step back to downward facing dog. Take a few breaths here. Shake the head out, flood with the lips. Bend your knees, look forward. Step or jump between your hands. Come to a flat back. Okay. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, bend your knees deeply. Lift the prayer up. Exhale, release your hands to prayer. In front of your heart. Just pausing in action. Thinking of this goal of equanimity of mind. This goal of being able to see Don't everyone as yourself. The best friend. Very powerful. Because the best friend will never try to do you wrong. And don't fear your worst friend. Remember the dollies on those words. Because the worst friend's just the best friend that's done you wrong. Think of someone as an old friend. Do you see that? Treat them with love and respect and dignity. Because the monsters know. There's something in common there that you can get beyond the difference. You exhale, release your arms down, inhale, bend your knees deeply, lift the prayer of the Utsmatasana. Exhale, dive forward, place your hands down. Inhale, come to a flat back. Exhale, step or jump back, slowly lower. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, back downward facing dog. Now right to forward, left heel down, lift the prayer of our head, warrior one. On the exhale, open the arms wide, warrior two. Inhale, straighten your right leg. Exhale, reach forward and down for triangle pose. 
So in this pose, you want legs to be strong and active. Don't bend the front knee if you can help it. Keep everything lifted. And then just bend at the right hip, wherever that right hand lands. Place that right hand down lightly. Lift the left arm up. Bring your gaze to the hand above or something not moving. Inhale. Exhale, one, breathing on your own. Bend your right knee. Today we're just going to bring right elbow to right knee. Send the left arm up and over the ear. Reach on the diagonal. Find your gaze in the hand above or something not moving. Inhale, draws the left side long. On the exhale, open the twist. Drop your left arm down the back of the left leg as you bring the right arm up and over the ear for a verse warrior. Now breathing is key to equanimity of mind. Slow the breathing down and you slow the thinking mind down. Differences begin to dissolve. Second warrior pose, place your hands down. Step back, downward facing dog. Option to stay here or go through the vinyasa on your own. Try the other side, inhale, left foot forward, right foot down. Lift the prayer of our head, warrior one. On the exhale, open your arms wide, warrior two. Inhale, straighten the left leg. Exhale, reach forward and down. Triangle pose. Again, strong, stable base. Straight legs if you can. Lightly place the left hand down as you reach up through the right side. We're trying to elevate here. Lift everything up. you're going to bend your left knee for extended side angle, left elbow to left knee today. Send the right arm up and over the ear, reach on the diagonal. Inhale, draws the right side long. On the exhale, open the twist for one. Exhale, drop the right arm down the back of the right leg. Bring the left arm up and over the ear for reverse warrior. I'm sharing. You next thing have come through warrior two. Place your hands down, step back. Option to stay here and downward facing dog and go through the vinyasa. Take a few breaths here, shake the head out, flood the lips. Here, exhale, bend your knees, look forward. Step or jump between your hands, come to a flat back, look up. Exhale, folding forward. Now bend your knees deeply. Lift the prayer. Exhale, straighten your legs, hands to prayer. Pause in action. There's something I always say to students in my class for many years is. You got better biceps through the practice, right? 
What do you want to do with those better biceps? And it's a suggestion towards the spiritual activism. What example do you want to be in the world to others? How do you want to carefully take your actions in the form of words, thoughts, and deeds? Because people are watching, people are paying attention. They want to see how you handle yourself in every situation. Even given a global pandemic, how are you conducting your business? You know, think of that steadiness and joy you get through those better biceps in this practice. That's what we're going to do. We're going to move with the strength we found, the stability we found, to be a place that people feel like they can have a discussion with differences. Where we can then find a common ground where we are the same. All right, from here we're going to try a little twisting pose, standing on one leg. You want to put your hand on a wall that's close by. That's always a good stabilizer, a good prop. Otherwise, it's okay to fall off of one leg. So you can start by drawing your right knee into your chest and take your left hand to the outside of the right knee and take the right arm up. A little more difficult, take hold of the foot. Don't lose height in the spine as you exhale, twist across the body. If you have the top leg, straighten as much as you can without folding forward. If you can, bring your gaze to the hand behind or something that's not moving. everything down. Give it a little shake out. Ooh, that was a good one. Let's try this side. Find your gaze place, something eye level. Draw the left knee up. Take hold of the outside of the left knee or foot. Keep the height of the spine. Find your Tadasana Mountain Pose. Left arm up. On the exhale, straighten the top leg without losing height in the spine. And exhale, twist across the body. Bring your gaze to the hand behind you or something not moving. Keep the meditative mood throughout, even if you're falling off of one leg. Bring your gaze forward, arm alongside the ear. Release everything down. Shake out, step and jump your feet together, hands to prayer. Now, interesting, I've been a private chef for 17 years for my client here in the city. And for 12 of those years, they never knew I was a vegan until the housekeeper decided she needed to share it with everybody with alarm. <laughs> i never forget, my client called me. So, Jeremy, I heard that you're a vegan. I said, well, no, I practice veganism, I told her. She goes, well, is that going to affect your job? I said, no, I still cook and practice, you know, my chef skills to perform my duties for you. But my personal life, I choose not to eat animals and it's not gonna change anything. She said, okay, great. And then it was never talked about again. So, you know, come from a place of compassion, place of just setting an example of what you think's good for you. And then maybe people come around. We'll see, okay. Hands to prayer, exhale the arms down. Inhale, bend your knees deeply, lift the prayer up, Utskatasana. Exhale, diving forward, place your hands down. Inhale, come to a flat back, pick up. Exhale, step or jump back, slowly lower, Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Exhale, back downward facing dog. Keeping your left heel turned up, step your right foot forward between your hands into lunge. Lift the arms alongside the ears. Take a moment here. Straighten the back leg, push the back heel away. As you bend the front knee, relax the shoulders as you reach up through the fingertips. See if you can bring your gaze a little bit higher than eye level. We're gonna take a twist from here. If you wanna bring the back knee to the floor for more support, that's a good variation. Inhale a breath, exhale, twist to the right side. Hook left elbow to the outside of the knee, hands to prayer. If you wanna bring the hand to the floor, Take a full bind, do that on your own. Your next inhale, place your hands down. 
Step back downward, facing dog. Option to stay here or go through the vinyasa on your own. And then we'll try the other side. Keeping your right heel turned up, step to your left foot forward into lunge. Lift the arms alongside the ears. Exhale a breath here. Again, find the standing pose. Push the back heel away as you straighten the back leg. Bend the front knee, relax the shoulders, lift the gaze. Coming into the twist again, back knee to the floor is a good variation. Inhale a breath. Exhale, twist to the left, right elbow to the outside of the knee, hands to prayer. If you're taking an arm variation or full bind, come into that on your own. Hold and breathe, no shaking, firm it up. Facing dog. From here, we're going to come into child's pose for a moment. Again, child's pose is an equalizing pose, right? It's a neutral pose, a place to regain focus, to regain that equanimity of mind. Think of that as one of your secret tools in your spiritual toolkit. I'm picking up my equanimity of mind so I can see what is the same instead of look for differences. And from here we're going to move towards peacock feather preparation. Pinch your Mayarasana. So if you want to use a block here between the hands, Point your finger and thumb, outline the sides of the block so the palms can come flat on the floor. This will help you maintain parallel hands, wrists, and forearms. If you don't need the block, don't use the block. Tuck the toes under, straighten the legs. First option, stay in this modified downward facing dog. Next option, lift the right leg up, hold here. Keep the emphasis on hands, wrists, and forearms, pushing down. You want to bend the left knee and practice hopping some weight. Equally into the arms, that's an option. Or come all the way up into your peacock feather if you have that practice. Hold and breathe. After about five breaths, come down wherever you are, rest in child's pose. Yeah, equalize and pose, whatever you found, whatever you judged it as, good or bad. Let it go. Remember, Krishna reminds us in the Bhagavad Gita, take the action for the action's sake. Be a good person because it's in your best interest. Right? Lead by example. You want your neighbor to be a good neighbor? Then you be a good neighbor first. It might take many years of you being friendly and saying kind words to them before they actually acknowledge. Maybe they never acknowledge it, but it doesn't matter. Right, you be a good neighbor because it's in your best interest. All right, second side. Again, use the block again. Take hold of either elbow, measure hands or forearms parallel. Tuck the toes under, straighten the legs. You can stay here, lift the opposite leg up. Again, concentrate on hands, wrists, and forearms, pressing down. If you want to bend the right knee, practice hopping some weight, equally into your arms, or come all the way up. If you have that practice, hold and breathe here. After about five breaths, come down. Again, rest in child's pose. Again, offer up the practice. Good. 
This is a great recording. It's Keshav Das, a friend of ours in New York back in the day. And we recorded this in Staten Island at our recording studio. And me and Amanda and my wife are doing some of the backup vocals with a few other friends. It's so great. What a great memory. All right, from here we're going to check the time. We have time for our headstand practice. So we're going to interlace our fingers, bring the elbows a little bit closer than shoulder distance apart. Everyone can do the half pose. Come on. Top of that on the floor behind your hands. Tuck the toes under, straighten the legs. Begin to walk the feet forward. Try to bring the weight equally into the forearms, about 80%, about 20% into the head. If you have any neck issues, just lift the head off the floor an inch and hold here for as long as you can. Ready to take it a step further, you're going to draw one knee into your chest. And then over time, you're going to understand the balance, and it'll make sense just to lift the other foot off the floor. Come into the egg shape. You never want to hop into this pose. If you're ready, straighten the legs. Hold and breathe here. about 10 breaths of 50, you can do the other 40 breaths for homework. Already come down, rest in child's pose. Again, try to find that place of equanimity. So slow the thinking mind down, breathe the body. When you're ready, come and sit up. From here, you're just going to sit to the side, extend the legs forward. We're going to set it for Hashimotanasana. Come on to the front of your sit bones. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, walk the hands forward. See what you can get hold of here. It might be outer edges of the feet, big toes, maybe your ankles. You want to grab a prop and use that to help get you into that position of bending forward. Use the prop. Inhale a breath here. Exhale, folding forward. chest, release the right knee after the side foot, drown is your sasana. Place the right foot firmly to the inner left thigh, engage the, stand, uh, the straight leg, inhale, lift up, exhale, folding forward, fold and breathe here. Exhale, folding forward, fold and breathe here. Chest, release the knees up to the side, take hold the inside of the feet, bound cobbler's pose. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, folding forward, fold and breathe here. Inhale, exhale one. Inhale, exhale two. Inhale, exhale three. Inhale, exhale four. Inhale. Exhale, five. Inhale, come up. 
From here, you're gonna bend your knees, cross your ankles, and inhale, lift everything off the floor. Exhale, step walker, jump back, lower, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, back, downward facing dog. Take a breath here. On your next inhale, roll forward, plank position. Exhale, lower knees, chest, chin to the floor, seat is high. Inhale, push through a low cobra. Hold here. Inhale the breath. Exhale, lower down. Adjust yourself on the mat if you need to. Bring your forehead down, arms to one side, the hips. Shalabhasana, honey. Inhale, lift your head, chest, straight legs off the floor. Come up. Lift a little bit higher. Exhale, release down. Turn your face to one side. Doesn't it feel good? Bend your knees. Grab hold of the ankles. On inhale, lift the head, chest, knees up. Don or asana, boat pose. Down, release the ankles, turn your face to the opposite side. Relax and let go. Second time, draw Narasana, bend the knees, grab hold of the outside or inside of the ankles. Inhale, lift head, chest, knees, come up. Exhale, release down. Turn your face to one side. Take a couple of breaths here. Rock hips from side to side if you like. And then when you're ready, turn over onto your back. Come into a half wheel pose. You can bend the knees, bring the heels close and towards the seat. Get your block ready if you think you're going to use it for your supported pose. On an inhale, lift your lower, middle, upper back off the floor. Interlace your hands underneath you, draw the arms long for half wheel. Okay, press everything down that's touching the floor. If you want to come to your first full wheel, hands alongside the ears, underneath the shoulders. Push into your hands and feet, cover the top of the head to begin. You can stay here or come all the way up. Five breaths. Pause and action. Second wheel, half on your own. Full wheel, hands alongside the ears, underneath the shoulders. Push into your hands and feet, come up. Five breaths. beyond the differences. Can you instead see what's the same? Spiritual activism in motion. Last wheel, hands alongside the ears, underneath the shoulders. See, this wheel isn't merely about better biceps and more flexible spine. It's about clearing the mind's ignorance, the avidya, to see what's the same in those in front of us. You ready? Come up. Five to eight breaths. Last wheel, half or full. into the chest. I'm just going to rock a little bit from side to side. Let's take a 
twist from here, bring the knees high to the chest. Let's do this, let's release the left leg down. Keep the right knee in towards your chest. If you want to take hold of the foot like we did standing earlier, you could do that. Next up, bring the near leg across the body to the left as you bring the gaze to the right. Wow, oh, that should feel really good. Inhale, come center. Draw both knees to your chest, release the right leg down. Take the right hand to the outside of the left knee and grab hold of the foot. Exhale, bring the leg or knee across the body. Look in the opposite direction. Yes, this should feel really good. Let go. And then coming center, both knees in your chest. You're gonna rock up to a seated position. You have an option here, you're gonna come into reclining goddess pose, feet together, knees bent, lie down. Or you're gonna come through Palasa to come into your very short shoulders down front. Hands flat on the back, lift the legs up. Try to keep some space around the throat. Hold and breathe here. Inhale a breath here. Exhale, lower the feet overhead, Malasana, and release hands or arms long in one direction. As you push the heels in the opposite direction. If your feet don't reach the floor, bend your knees. Keep your hands on your back. Lower the knees towards your forehead. Then release the hands to the floor, keep the arms pressing down and pressing down. Gently roll, we'll meet the others in our reclining goddess pose. And we're going to rub hands together, create some heat, place both hands on the chest, on up at the chakra. This is where the equanimity of mind can begin, we'll begin to see the world through the lens of love and compassion. Right? Why do I stop eating meat? Because I don't like the taste of it? No, that's ridiculous. I do it because it's an act of compassion. It's a way to practice it and it's non-violent. And I do it for myself. If others want to do it as well, I'm happy for them if they choose not to. What David told me was people are doing the best they can. They are doing what they think is right. We shouldn't judge them for their choices. They want to eat meat? That's fine. Eat meat. But do what you think. Have your own conviction so that you can begin to see the same as others. Karen always says, you think others are in your way, but they're actually in the way. Sit down, be quiet, listen to what they say. Put your judgments aside. From here, you're going to bring your hands to your knees, gently bring them together. Straighten the legs. You want to set up for Shavasana. Take a moment here, find a position where you can spread out completely. You feel relaxed, comfortable. And then let go.
begin to lengthen your next inhale. Begin to move your fingers and toes, bringing consciousness back into your body. When we're done with this part of the class, I suggest you go back into your Shavasana for a 10 minute relaxation. Wow, what an amazing practice today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you giving me this opportunity to teach. What a gift in my life. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. May the thoughts, words, and actions in my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and to that freedom for all. hands to prayer in front of our hearts again Anjali Mudra asking something from the heart in this instance we're asking to give thanks to all of our teachers especially the inner guiding teacher the Sadguru bowing forward Om Bolo Sadguru Bhagavan Ki Jai Hari Om Tat Sat inhaling to come up nice to see all of you have a great day please be inspired by these teachings read the focus of the month Get beyond your judgment and your differences. See what is the same, what resonates with you inside. A little note on the 13th <laughs> of May, I think it's a Thursday, uh, Yogeshwari is spe uh, teaching a special class at Nandi. The proceeds going to her foundation, the Azhar Foundation. Uh, please come if you can. You can sign up online. And um, I'll remember because it's my son's 16th birthday, May 13th. <laughs> So I'm going to give that to him as a gift. Hopefully he will come and join us. Um, homework, 20 minutes meditation. I hope you all have a, a blessed day. Thank you for your attention as always. Namaste. Uh, you can reach me on Facebook, Jeremy.